Hello friends, welcome to episode 6 of Valad Engineers. Today we are celebrating the International Day for Women and Girls in Science uh, and I'm super excited today to speak to quantum uh, quantum physicist and professional ballerina Dr. Marit Mu today and thank you so much Grassroots Education for sponsoring this series. Uh, please check them out. Hello Denise and hello Kamal, nice to see you all. Um, so Dr. Merritt Moore is voted as Forbes 30 under 30 and she's also um, a quantum physicist from degrees uh, from Harvard, uh, from Harvard <laughs> and, um, and Oxford University as well and her ballet career took her to the English National Ballet and also to the Norwegian Ballet amongst others. Um, she's performed in well-known um, performances like this one and also the Nutcracker. Hello, I can see you. Just accepted your request, so I'm just going to wait for Dr. Merritt Moore to join me today. And I, I'm so excited. We are going to answer your questions, but also if you haven't sent your question through, do feel free to put it in the comments. Hello. Hi. Hi, how Hello. are you? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> I'm really good. How's your day? What time is it over there? It's 11.30 p.m. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So you are in Dubai right now, right? I am in Dubai, yeah. How, what brings oh, us I'm to Dubai? Here. I'm on Monday here. Um, I was avoiding the lockdown in London Fair. and uh, just now staying here. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been there for? I've been here. I was supposed to be here just 10 days, but it's now been over a month and I'll be here a month more so hey ho that's really cool that's a long time I can just see some of the comments Aww. saying I just I just read about girls. you in my book good night stories for rebel girls too that's cool oh, someone's in that? the hospital say again I can't hear you very well uh, someone you can you not can no you it was my, my volume head. it wasn't very high ah, okay I fixed it now and let me see if someone's I can put that where the Robbie is in the other room. Wait, 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 the robot. Yeah, yeah. Someone just asked. I'm like, oh, oh the other so room. tell me about that. Well, first of all, introduce yourself to the people that are watching now. I know everybody knows you and love you, but do go for it. Uh here's Francesco. He does wonderful music. Um, hi everyone. I'm Merritt, and I pursued um, physics and undergrad and PhD, and also. Uh, ballet dancer, but now I'm trying to combine my passions to dancing with robots <laughs> and having fun. How did that come about? Like I saw that it's beautiful, it's incredible. What brought you that idea? Oh, you. Um, how it came about? I think well, it was out of a wanting to sleep a little more. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pursuing physics and dance um, on their own separately take up a lot of time. And pursuing yeah. both together <laughs> takes up even more time. Um, <laughs> and then and so here is me calling like, you at basically midnight, right? Taking up more of your yeah. time. No, this is lovely. Um, so just wanted to like merge the two together to to create more sleep time. Is is kind of the. <laughs> So yeah. did you um did you make the robot stuff yourself, or was it stuff that was around? No. Yeah, these, these are industrial robotic arms. They've existed for quite a long time. And right. they exist in, in mainly in manufacturing. So they mm. assist um, uh, either, like the larger ones will help create car, like make cars. Um, these will, you know, it be used for industrial purposes. Um, and I, I looked at it, I was like, mm, potential dance partner, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you yeah. have got a lot of fans in the comments. Everybody loves you. Oh, wonderful. Oh, they're so, yeah, this is fun. That is nice wonderful. Um, so I do actually, I have people's questions in this bag. Um, so I just asked people oh, cool. some questions that they want to ask you. So we're going to try to go okay. through as many of them as we can in the next 20 Fantastic. minutes. How do you feel about Let's that? Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. Bring it on. <laughs> okay. Um, and hello so to everyone who's here. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, shall we answer one of the questions in the comments first? So I've got a comment saying, how long have you been doing ballet from Sugra SJ? 
since I was 13, which is, really? it's now been a long, yeah. So that's late in the dance world. So that's why I think it's been such a hard journey is having started mm. so late, but I don't think I would have been at where I, you know, I don't, if I had started earlier, I'm not sure I'd be where I am right now. So I think, right. Yeah, right. Like, I, I really do believe like everything happens for a reason. And for me, having started late was, it just gave me that like, oh, you know, it just made every minute. So I just valued every minute so much more because I was like, yeah, I now have to catch up, you know, so I, I just appreciated every minute and second that I had in the studio. Um, and so I think and I, you know, I heard you like you used to wake up at 5 a.m. to dance and then go to the lab later on. How how long were you doing that for? Years, years, <laughs> you know, I would say. I mean, probably 10 years of really hard, intense. Um, and that's while you were work. studying at Harvard, is that right? Yeah, Harvard was by far, I think, the toughest period in terms mm. of like lack of sleep. Um, mm. just because we had, if you're doing a science major, you have for the problem sets due every week. So I had physics every week, which would take me like 20 hours per problem set each week, mm. computer science each week. That also would take me 20 hours. You know, the math would take me also 20 hours. And like, yeah. you know, I try to find an easy class, but I'd end up screwing up and getting myself into a hard class. You know, that yeah. would also take, you know, so that was every single week where something was due. So you just never had a break. Um, yeah. And, and then yeah. on top of that, working in the lab and on top of that training, and then I was auditioning. And so that was by far like the time where I was like, oh. and, and that was the time when I hadn't made it in any sense of the way, like, right. I, definitely the first two years, I hadn't gotten into a ballet company. I wasn't sure I could uh, get into a grad school or, even survive in the physics um, at Harvard yeah. and, you know, putting in that much work for years and not yeah. knowing if it's going to pay off. That's for sure. Like that's for sure the hardest part. So, yes. so, but you know, at the end it's also like the most rewarding and, um, <laughs> and I was like finding, you know, tricks along the way of like, you know, telling my prepping, you know, being like, okay, if it doesn't work out, how do I make sure that I am having a blast while I'm working this hard? And that it feels worthwhile, even if that the outcome that I'm kind of striving for doesn't work out. What what other way can I feel super like at ease with myself, no matter what the outcome? So totally. that was, and yeah. we've got so many people agreeing in the comments. We've got Gemma saying brave, oh. and Emma saying absolutely. Ivy, hello, Ivy, saying inspiring, so brave, really. Oh. And, you know, I um I found it hard at uni actually, and I had a really tough time trying to access university as a refugee. And then once I did access university, yeah. it was not what I thought. So I studied engineering and it was really, yeah. sort of, I find working so much easier than going to university because it's that, you know, you don't have time for yourself. Like when I went out on the weekends, I felt guilty. I don't know if you felt the same. Yeah. Oh man, mm -hmm. oh, don't tell me about it. Because you always, there's always more that you can do yeah. And there's always more that you can be learning and there's always, and you're always behind. <laughs> so, <for laughs> yeah, sure. there, oh, and thank you to behind. everyone here. To Emma. Hello, friends. Sorry, I always have like my unicorn mug for good luck. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Let's we go always need our good luck thing. Say yeah, again? We can go through questions. Oh, we always oh, yay, need our good go luck. Uh, um, yeah. So I do have a different theme tune for the bag every time. And today is going to be... Ta Ta -da -da, ta -ta. <laughs> Let's see what's in that. Ta -ta -da. This one is from Il Mehdi 16. Okay, so this is an interesting question. I want to yeah. ask you how much time do you think we must use every day to get this result or best results to master something, a subject? I mean, I think it's a personal, it's whatever time you want to invest in it, right? Mm. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly passionate about what I do. So any time that I have, I want to spend doing that more than yeah. anything else. So, um, so it's, it's hard for me to say what people, sh how much time people should or should not do. Like if it feels like a chore, I think 
I, yeah, and it's, it's a tricky one because you have to put in the hard work even when it's not fun if you want certain mm-hmm. results, right? Like, um, but at the same time, hopefully you're doing something that you love doing it and that, <laughs> that goal of getting it is like so freaking exciting that you, you just lose track of everything else. Um, Absolutely, you know, yeah. But, but I think, you know, for those who do want to be excellent at things, you have to put in more hours than anyone else, right? So mm. it's, a, it's a lot of like... <laughs> It takes work. <laughs> How long um, would you say you put into your work as a physicist and your work as a ballerina per day? I I call it I I call it like I've got these um the dials, you know. So there's a hundred there's twenty four hours in the day, right? So yeah, I I can't go at a hundred percent in both all the time. It's just like yeah, it's just not gonna happen. But what I will do is like is, you know, before performance, I'll ramp up the dance training. Or obviously when I'm in company, I've ramped up the dance training and lower in the physics. Or if I've got a physics exam or if experiment, if experiment is running and it's working, like I am all hands on deck for that experiment, right? <laughs> so like I am 100% on physics. Um, so I, I will move the dials depending on urgency. Yeah, what's, what's due next? What's due next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally get yeah, what's that. Due and next? Yeah. I, um, and con- uh, but continuing the momentum, so I'm constantly pushing the balls and all, but like full on focus on one or the other on a certain day. Yeah. 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 I, I, I definitely do have days where I'm more kind of feeling a bit more arty and days where I feel a lot more engineering. Yeah. I have a l- really lovely job that like lets me do both kind of, I can use um, mm. sort of video making and stuff about engineering, which is still art, right? So it's, um, yeah. And I think having this creativity as a scientist or as an engineer just makes you excel in both like what makes and I don't know if you feel the same about yourself but I feel like what makes me into an artist makes me into a better engineer and what makes me into an engineer makes me into a lesser artist would you say this is something you relate to oh a hundred percent I think broadening um one perspective and and who one interacts with is so helpful for different fields and also I think the main thing is also it, it um, gives one appreciation. So, yeah. you know, I, what I found is, I think, unfortunately, the way the dance world works is, it's like, you're only focused on dance. Mm. And that's, if you do anything else, you're disloyal to dance. But really? I think that's such a shame because, yeah, it's, but also the physics world, right? Like, if you're doing anything huh. else other than that, then you're disloyal to that field. Um, but I think that's such a shame because I would see, some dancers, you know, they've gone to ballet school their whole lives and then they're in company and they've lost that appreciation or that joy in being in the studio. Yeah. Whereas I think if you have a second passion, um, totally, but yeah. more, but also that's, that's different. Like, you know, physics, it meant that I was sitting or standing all day in a lab. And so it just made that appreciation for when I was in the studio and feeling the live music, like that, it just made me appreciate that one hour and I think if you have an appreciation for when you're there, you excel 10 times more than if you've not feeling that appreciation. I, so I've that was... never heard it put so perfectly before. That's mm. yes, exactly. I'm just like, yes, yes, totally. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to go through some of the comments. So yeah. Mary Yakek says, yeah. university is really hard. Nice to hear that it seems to indeed be getting better afterwards. Um, yeah. And Miss Smith Dansko, um, it is a matter mm-hmm. of self-realizing that they are aware uh, when they begin and when they end. So I think like talking about when you do your ballet and when you do um, your science. Yeah. And people are asking, what part of physics is your PhD in from Sagra? Uh, yeah, I did quantum optics. So uh, <laughs> it was in the atomic in the atomic and laser physics department at Oxford. Um, so quantum optics is so much fun. It's amazing. It's like you have your own experiment and like my phd was creating these single photon sources so wow. it was like shining it was it was amazing so it's shining like this laser high intense laser into this crystal tiny tiny crystal and then it would create um pairs of photons single excitations of light it's weird. like it's like what we describe as like particles of light if you can 
which is even so weird to fathom. But I'm just like, this is just so much magic to me. It's so hard for me to like visualize, but well, I find it so magical and beautiful. Yeah, it's the amazing thing is it does feel like magic. I feel like I'm like, this is like PG adult magic, you know, like, <laughs> um, yeah. and it would go, you know, you get these photons that would go into these fibers and we'd like sneak these fibers down to the next level where we'd have this um, detector that have to be at minus 273 Celsius, like what? so cold, in order to, de to detect the tiny photons. No. And um, it was, and you would see these quantum properties where it's like the possibility of certain, like, I mean, it's hard for me to describe in like 10 seconds, but like the possibility of photons going into uh, entering like certain certain events of photons mm -hmm. would the the probability of that happening would cancel out like and you would see it in the actual experiments and the detection. And it's just it was amazing. It was very good. Oh, and I'm, also I'm, I'm jealous. Oh, I'm really somebody else to see that. <laughs> It was so cool. It was, it was very, very, like, I know, exploring the mysteries of the universe that are so yeah. perplexing and that we still don't understand. It's just, I mean, it's amazing. That is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so Sugra is saying um, about the previous question, I guess, absolutely time in ballet somehow makes your brain relax to create in the lab. And I find that when I dance too, I'm just like, yes, I can do more engineering tomorrow. And I've got another comment. Um, how do you feel biocentrism affects your studies? Does your observations affect what you see? Um, you mean like how, how would like physics help me in the ballet studio perhaps? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I was just like, what is this um, science question? It's clever. Maybe you understand. I don't know what biocentricism means. Maybe you can explain to us in the comments. And let's go through another question in the bag for now until we get an explanation. Yes? Okay, let's do it. Yeah, cool. Yay! Okay, what does this question say? Uh, this is from E5 Group, and they're a really cool ele electrical engineering podcast. Hello, E5. Um, and it is saying, are you aware of how badass you actually are? Seriously impressive oh. human being. <laughs> yeah. well, I do so actually, funny. I do want to use this as a proper question. Do you know how badass <laughs> you are? No, 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 no. I, I, I am, um, I, uh, I'm, I'm continually humbled because I'm surrounded by, by people that are extraordinary. So, um, yeah, <laughs> in every sense, I think every day is I'm like very humbled, <laughs> um, <laughs> it, which, is, it, which is great. It's, 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 so, it's extraordinary to me. I think like the community that I find myself in and, and meeting people like you who are just amazing, like next level amazing mm. and are still so humble. It's, it's beautiful. Oh. Um, so I, let I, me I think when you're around very brilliant people all the time, you're like, oh, <laughs> We've got lots to learn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess like um, people will never stop learning. And I, I do you um, sort of do you go through sort of imposter syndrome moments at all? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, well, I think it's different. I think um, I definitely go through doubts mm. of like, oh my god, I'm putting in so much work. Like, is this going to work out? Mm. Um, but I think there's very much an acceptance of like feeling like very accepting, like, okay, I'm human. I'm going to have lots of emotions. Like I'm going to have my ups and downs. I'm going to feel um, maybe terrified or <laughs> excited <laughs> or whatever it is. Um, but being very accepting of that. So I, I think mm -hmm. I'm quite um, patient with myself or like, yeah, accepting of, of the emotions that will come up and just be like, okay, yeah. this is how I'm feeling. Yeah, perhaps, I mean, I, perhaps it'd be feelings of that imposter syndrome or like feeling out of place. Um, I don't, I don't want to say imposter syndrome, but like feeling out of place and yeah. just saying, okay, but I can feel these, we're all human, but I'm going to keep on doing step by step forward, right? Like 
I'm going to just keep on giving my best and, and, you know, having that feeling that like every hour that I put in is going to pay off, you know, every foot forward is going to be helpful. Um, yeah. and, and for myself, it's very much, I don't know if I'll make it in terms of what I've set the bar for myself, but I do feel like any step forward that I make pursuing both science and art, it will then open the doors for others who are perhaps much more talented than I am for them to be like, Oh, okay. If, if this merit girl can do it, then I, and she hasn't been what? what she's doing, then I can do it, you know? So, um, but, but definitely, yeah, yeah. I think we'll constantly go through those ups and downs, but I think being quite rational about it, being like, huh? Yeah. Don't feel so great about this, but we're going to keep on working. You know, <laughs> I think, um, thank you for sharing that because I think these are like Thanks. difficult things to share. And when I hear stuff like that coming from people I look up to like you, it just makes me feel oh. so much more like, um, you know, I can do it. Like it's possible when I hear these human emotions from people like you, it's just, it's um, really nice. And everybody loves you in the comments still. Um, oh, thank you. Fox, Doodle Fox. <laughs> says you are absolutely amazing happy women in science day you inspire me you are oh. wonderful and i second that i okay. know we've run out of time i always do this but how do you feel about one more question yeah sure no problem <laughs> all right let's do it cool so let's pick this one this one is from Ninkab and says tips on how to balance science and ballet because I am doing the same thing that's a hard thing to balance isn't it yeah and I think balance in general is really difficult I think yeah we're always trying to find a balance and it's just knowing that it's always going to change like there's no perfect formula for balance a in general for everyone but also personally I think that balance changes um so yeah I would say that's that's one thing that I find quite difficult um but in terms of pursuing both I would say I think also every like valuing one's time mm -hmm. is probably mm -hmm. the most important thing like I I think people don't realize how much they can actually fit in the day and it mm -hmm. adds a little bit of pressure perhaps um yeah. but if one can if one can just do add more things but you make it habit. So commuting, like I would definitely like be listening to an audiobook or reading or doing feet exercises or like, uh, yeah, during my college days, I would constantly be working and improving mm -hmm. something every single hour of the day. Mm -hmm. And it's tricky for me to recommend this because I think people feel a lot of pressure already. Um, but definitely. Burnout think, is real. Right. But I think especially with social media. So I think take it easy on social media. I think, um, uh, you know, you know, see where your time is getting consumed by and ease it up. Like, I think that everyone has, I think, a secret hidden two or three hours actually in the day that they don't even realize. Um, and uh, but also if one feels maxed out and already feels like, overpressured I think then take things out you know like mm. one one advice is you know at the beginning of the day before you look at your phone before you do anything write down the three things that are most important to you mm. and like what are three things that you could do that day that would help those three things and those three th things could be like family or a friend or you know one goal in dance or goal in physics yeah because I, otherwise, I think we get lost in this like whirlwind of like emails and admin and social media and things yeah. that won't really leave an impact later on. Um, yeah. So I think that's super important. But that's just, I mean, finding the right balance is always a struggle. And it's that's why I think it's nice to be kind of a scientist or experimental, you know, <laughs> experimentalist and play around with what works and what's, you know every day yeah. I'm gonna do that this morning actually that's beautiful advice thank you so much and thank you for making time for me tonight even though it's super late where you are in Dubai and mm -hmm. thank you I probably well, I promised you this 
a while See? back. So I was like, I'm going to keep this. I promised that we'd meet at this time. So I was like, a while back. And you'd ask, so Jen, so I was like, I'm going to make this, you know, I <laughs> promise so we're going to make this happen. <laughs> no. And thank you everybody for going for another badass yeah, engineer. Thanks everyone. Thank you, RS Grassroots, for sponsoring this series. Please do check out their stuff and check out Dr. Merritt's work. Um, you have an amazing podcast and your first episode was with... Neil deGrasse, yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? Tyson, yeah. You are so cool. So come, come, yeah, we've got SciArt Party at SciArt Party for all of those who are interested in either science or art or both. And we've got this podcast, the Poolside Polymaths podcast. And we had um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He came to one of our events live. So we used <laughs> his wisdom there and described it. So if people missed the live event, we have it now in podcast form. And yes, so that's we'd amazing. love for people, he'd love to hear your comments and yeah, if you guys wanted that's to share. It. <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, yeah, you. I'll see you around. I'm here if I ever can help with anything. Oh my goodness, same here. You're, it, you have such wonderful energy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, lots of love. Masalama, everybody. And I'll see yeah. you in two weeks for another badass engineer. Bye. Bye.